Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over swapping an SR20 DET bell housing onto a KA24E transmission rear section. Since these particular transmissions are so interchangeable with one another, I went ahead and listed a few of their respective gear ratios for reference. There are more transmission configurations than this, but these are the factory service manuals I could actually find. All right guys, let's get started. First, we're gonna take off the front cover. Here, I'm using a 12 millimeter socket. The lower of the two bearings in this picture has a flat washer that's actually in the front cover assembly. Try not to lose that. Now remove the snap ring with your snap ring pliers. So this C-clip is kind of a pain, but with a little bit of patience, it'll come off. Since the input shaft sticks out just a little beyond the bell housing, I use two pieces of wood to offset that distance. The case bolts are also 12 millimeter. So to avoid damage when separating the case halves from the sandwich plate, try to only hit the area on the sandwich plate that sticks out beyond the actual case halves themselves. There's a little bit of extra material that sticks out, a little bit of extra steel. Uh, use those points to actually hammer on. This part doesn't require a lot of force at all. All you're basically doing is just making a small gap. That way you can get small pry bars in between and separate the case from the sandwich plate. So the only real differences in the rear case sections is that the SR20 doesn't have provisions for the overdrive switch and the KA24E does. Also, the vent ports are a little bit different. So on the KA24E, it has a static vent port, whereas the SR20 has a tube vent port. It's not required to swap the rear extension cases if you don't want to. However, if you are wanting to do that, you'll need two flat punches and a hammer and a 27 millimeter socket to do so. There are two expansion pins that hold the shift selector to the shift selection rod. So you'll need a smaller punch to get the smaller one out and then a larger punch to do that. And if you follow how I'm doing this, you'll actually end up pushing them both out and be able to pull them out from the uh, speed sensor uh, hole.
So I never really like painting things that could be cleaned up with a little bit of elbow grease. If you're wanting to see how I'm able to clean these transmissions the way I do, uh, I'll link the video down below. It shows me going through uh, how to clean one of these things, but this is the stuff you'll need. All right guys, so preparation is key here. Make sure that every mating surface is nice and clean. I use a little bit of brake cleaner on a rag just to get off any oil contaminants because you do not want to put any sealant down and have some oil or else it won't seal properly. For this application, I like to use RTV Ultra Gray. It works well, it seals up real nice, and there's not too many procedures that you have to follow to use it. Um, one thing is you definitely don't want to glob this stuff on there. Try to get a nice little quarter inch bead all the way around. I'm weird, so I, I you know smooth everything out with my finger, but you definitely don't have to do that. carefully lower the transmission down into the bell housing. It will require a little bit of persuasion due to the uh, secondary shaft bearing inlay. Um, so don't be afraid to get a little rubber mallet action on it. Okay, so it may look like I have OCD, but it's that important to have these surfaces clean. You repeat the same steps with the RTV as before. Okay, so this next step is pretty darn important, but the video kind of goes fast. What you need to do before you mate the rear section to the actual sandwich plate itself is you'll have to get the rear section hovering over the sandwich plate and make sure that you put your selector, your shifter selector, on the selector rod before lowering the case all the way down. Only snug these down about hand tight for right now. You're gonna to have to wait an hour for the RTV to set up before fully torquing. According to the factory service manual, you'll wanna to torque these between 12 and 14 foot pounds. You do not want to strip these. I ordered a new OEM gasket and seals to ensure proper functionality. Using a 36 millimeter socket and a rubber mallet, you're able to install the rear seal without any trouble. I used a 32 millimeter socket this time around and then repeated the process.
Now just install the large C-clip on the input shaft bearing and the snap ring on the input shaft itself. So you're going to clean the area one last time, then locate the shim washer and cover gasket. Place the shim washer in the cover and hold the gasket on with two top bolts. Carefully slide the cover onto the transmission and bolt it down. Now you'll torque the bolts down between 12 and 15 foot-pounds. Install the large expansion pin first. Don't hammer it all the way in. Let it stick out about a quarter of an inch so you can start the second smaller pin. Once the smaller pin is installed, drive it home. Install the side guide pins, then torque their spring perch bolts down between 14 and 22 foot-pounds. And that's it. Hopefully this video was helpful for you, and I really appreciate you guys watching it. Thanks. I'm in the process of making a video covering the install of a CD009 VQ transmission onto an SR20 DET engine. So stay tuned for that guys. Cheers.